This, Justin, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center. In the wake of 9-11, we called on Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty. I never imagined that the time when that article would be called was not when Germany was attacked, but when America was attacked. In an era where the world is more complex and dangerous than we have seen in decades, our allies and partners become even more important. Every time I've gone into combat over the last uh, 28 years, we've been there side to side with our allies and partners. I've never been in a single fight where I've done it alone. We can compete and deter and win most effectively when we operate together. What sets the U.S. apart from its adversaries is their allies and partners. Working behind the scenes are international affairs airmen in more than 100 countries, maintaining these relationships through security cooperation efforts. Security cooperation is building that relationship and partnership. It can be exercises, it can be training and professional military education, it can be equipment sales for interoperability, and then we also have information exchange and cooperative agreements. There's a variety of assignments that an international airman can have. Each one is complex and unique in its own right. But together, these airmen build partnerships, strengthen partner capabilities, and develop international airmen. One of the Air Force's most experienced international affairs specialists are called Foreign Area Officers, also known as FAOs. FAOs must have three things to become certified as a FAO. One is language. La seguridad. One is regional expertise. Abu Dhabi. Musaha. And then the last one is a advanced academic degree with a regional focus. So through our skills in language, regional expertise, and culture, we understand how to develop the relationship with the host nation where we're trying to accomplish our objectives. You know, obviously working in the combat zone um, is going to speed up that uh, relationship, but uh, you, can't, you can't surge trust and you can't surge interoperability. It's got to be worked over time. So by having these set of, of regional experts working with our partner nations while we're not at war, it enables us to be much more effective in the case of a war. After training, FAOs can take on a number of roles, like security cooperation officers or air attaché. The two positions are complementary, but the attaché serves in a more diplomatic capacity. They maintain relationships at the highest level and keep informed about what's happening in and around their assigned country, whereas security cooperation officers are specifically focused on building partner capabilities to make working together easier when addressing mutual security challenges. One of the many countries around the world hosting both an air attaché and a security cooperation officer is Jordan. So at the most basic level, my responsibilities here as the Air Attaché is to maintain the relationship for the U.S. Air Force with the Royal Jordanian Air Force. So what that gets me is access to the Royal Jordanian Air Force leadership, which in turn gets translated over to when our senior leaders come, they can then meet with the most senior people here. The relationship between United States Air Force and Royal Jordanian Air Force is a long-lasting and a historic and enduring relationship since a long time ago. After September 11, Jordan was among the first country who arrived at the United States Central Command. We are standing side by side with the United States, the Jordanian government, Jordanian armed forces, and we have fought with them together. We flew together over Syria and over Iraq at the end of the day, their goals are our goals. They want a stable region, they want a stable Jordan, which is why they stand alongside us with the same exact goals to eliminate 
terrorism in the region and to create a stable environment for their population. In order to create a more stable environment, it's important to have the right equipment and training to defend the area. That's where security cooperation officers come in. So they enhance what I do here. While I maintain the relationship at the operational and strategic level of the RJAF, they are bringing training and operational level experience to the tactical and operational level which then enhances Jordan's capability and Jordan's ability to fight alongside us, which then enables us to not have to send as many people. If I have a Jordanian Air Force F-16 flying and dropping bombs, that's a US Air Force F-16 that doesn't have to. So we actually have a pretty robust training office here in Jordan. We send between five and 600 Jordanians to the US every year, and we also train between two and 300 here in Jordan. Figuring out what type of training they need to get the capabilities they want is, is a key part of it. We spend a lot of time going and talking to the units. Um, I have a counterpart who I mainly work with on the RJAF side in the Air Force and then also on the JAF side for the, for the Army. Uh, we meet with them twice a week to discuss you know, what courses we need and how to get those courses. They work with us also in uh, setting with us the plans and review the five-year uh, security assistance roadmap that we have. We have to put together those long-term plans to figure out how to get them from point A to point B. And what needs to come up in the next year or two years or three years and making sure there's enough money to support that training and making sure that the capabilities that the Jordanians want um, are being addressed. Another way the U.S. builds relationships and strengthens partner capabilities is through the Military Personnel Exchange Program, also known as MPAP. This program integrates airmen into a squadron of another country's air force. Basically, partner countries trade airmen for a period of time to develop a better understanding of how that air force operates and to increase each other's capabilities. An example of that is the U.S. currently has a maintenance exchange officer and an F-16 pilot embedded with the Royal Jordanian Air Force. On the other side, an RJAF maintenance officer and a pilot are embedded with the United States Air Force in the States. Once you get here, your first reaction is, it's got to be like the U.S. Air Force, right? Because that's what we come from. Um, and then you have that wave of kind of trying to accept that it's not going to be like the U.S. Air Force because it's not the U.S. Air Force. But then after that, you kind of come to a place where you can work together on a very seamless level. And the biggest thing I've seen is, you know, our Jeff members asking, well, how do you do it? And then explaining how they do it and trying to find somewhere in the middle that works for both. To have more people with different experience, with different paces in U.S., that is a great thing. Each and every guy comes over here with a new idea and he tried to implement all the experience that he had in USAF and to implement it here in RGF. At the same time, RGF officers are back in the States teaching U.S. airmen and improving operations. These personnel exchanges enhance relationships between the Air Forces, creating a stronger force together. This is just one example of more than 100 countries around the world where security cooperation efforts are happening. The U.S. is committed to maintaining and building new international partnerships to achieve global security and stability. We need to never forget that not only are we the most ready and lethal Air Force, but we have willing, ready, and lethal partners. That's something that our adversaries don't have. That's what makes us fly, fight, and win.